and action. Hey, hi, welcome back. I'm Billy, and this is Show and Tell, a weekly podcast that talks about knitting, sometimes usually vintage and accessorizing. I have a couple of things hanging behind me that I'm going to talk to you about today. There's something new on my needles, never before seen. And I have some other little chitter chatter to bring you up to date on my busy New York City lifestyle. (laughs) Yeah, it's been a crazy week. Husband's birthday slipped in there and that meant uh, a couple of things. I'll talk about that later on in the episode. So stick around. Since we last met, I finished these fingerless mitts. It's a free pattern by Suzanne Bryan. I'll have a link in the show notes. I knit it with Rowan Soft Yak DK, which is part yak, part cotton. Yeah, I had to refer to one of the ball bands. It's 70% cotton, 15% yak, 9% nylon. It's a chainette construction. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. This is becoming my signature color, like a pearl gray. I do an array of grays, as you might have seen before. And I have a charcoal gray project that hasn't gotten onto my needles yet, um, which I'm hoping some of you will figure out. I have a Carol Feller project in mind for the charcoal yarn that I bought in Paris in January. So I'm waiting for some of you to weigh in on what you think I might be knitting next. Anyway, I digress. So these mitts, uh, let me slip one on. Clearly I haven't woven in the ends yet, but I'll get there. So I just wanted to show you the fit. She has fabulous instructions and videos to show you how to get a good fitting thumb gusset um, when I weave in my ends, I'll be able to tighten up that little hole, but I'm just delighted with these. I haven't knit anything like this before, and my hands tend to get cold since I live in a climate that has sometimes pretty cold winter. So I'm looking forward to a, a season when I'll be able to wear these. I think when they're blocked, they're going to be even better looking. I didn't do twisted rib and I'm not so happy with this ribbing. I really should stick exclusively to twisted rib because I think it makes a much neater rib. Anyway, um, the ball started out this size, 50 grams, and I still have this much left. So just to give you an idea, um, you know, if you're interested in doing that project, doesn't seem to take a lot of yarn at all. The other two things that I finished were both for my son. I'll insert pictures here so you can see them. Those have been shipped off to California for him. So I had shown you this before. That wasn't graceful. Um, This is my Spencer from a pattern that I picked up at a community center in Scotland, a vintage pattern. I had finished everything, but I hadn't found the ribbon. So I went on a mission to find quarter of an inch wide satin ribbon, finally found it. And here is the end result. I so wanted it to be very lingerie-ish. I still have a stitch marker holding it together because I want to just put one little stitch in there to tack it so that this bow will always stay exactly in place. It took me a few tries to get the bow to a a situation where I liked it. So there it is. The ribbon goes all the way around. And um, I spoke before about all this crochet edging to make those little squares that the ribbon goes through. It was a series of layers. Um, I think first there was treble crochets spaced out and then there was like a whole Pico design. So it was like multiple times around. Same thing with the armholes, except there's no ribbon there. So it didn't have that little square opening. 
but it's a project that took a very long time, but now that it's totally finished, I'm delighted with it. So now that I have all of those things off my needles, only now would I allow myself to cast on a new project because I subscribe to this philosophy of Fifi, finish it first, finish something before you cast on something new. And I felt like I earned that. I was all set to cast on the Carol Feller project, which again, reminder, comment below if you can guess what that's going to be. I was all set to cast that on. And then I decided, no, you know, I'd really rather have a smaller project that I think I could finish more rapidly, something that would be more portable. That yarn, I think it's worsted weight, but I decided to go with an accessory for this sweater. At Vogue Knitting Live, most recent Vogue Knitting Live, I saw a woman, I'll insert a picture here. Her sweater matched the scarf that she was wearing. And I thought, I should have certainly a scarf for every sweater in my wardrobe. I don't have the space to keep adding sweater after sweater after sweater. Accessories take up less space. That's probably why I'm drawn to jewelry. Also, you don't have to try them on. There's no fit involved. So I thought that I would like to knit a scarf or some kind of a, a wrap to complement this sweater. Because I wear this sweater a lot and I wear it in all seasons. It's made with 100% extra fine merino from Color Mart. It's the yarn that comes on cones like this. It's industrial yarn. This is three strands of that. The yarn I just showed you is like a cobweb weight. So three strands of that, probably comparable to fingering weight. A skein of this yarn was tossed to me in a yarn toss at the end of one of the fashion shows of Vogue Knitting Live. I hope you can see the beautiful jewel tones. There's emerald, there's amethyst, there's lapis color. There's so many lovely shades here that I thought really complement this. Let me give you... Let's go with a more up-close view. At that Vogue Knitting Live show, I was wandering in and out of the booths, and I happened to see a shawl. The entirety of it was on display, the full length of it, which is 62 inches. And it was done with lace weight yarn, which this happens to be. So the pattern that I'm working on is called Rosary Vine. I'll put a link below. I think I'll insert a picture here too, so you can see it. This yarn is Malabrigo and it has an extra little hang tag that says single lot. There's no dye lot. I guess this was like some random thing that they were trying out, they decided not to go with or whatever, I don't know. But it's Malabrigo Lace, 100% Baby Merino, 470 yards in 50 grams. And it's really soft. It's soft like a cotton ball, soft. The pattern calls for 20.5 stitches and 36 rows to four inches or 10 centimeters. Now, because it's not a garment and I'm not so preoccupied with how it's going to fit, I did a teeny tiny swatch. I just wanted to make sure that the stockinette part of it was going to be a fabric that had drape and wasn't too sheer. And I thought this seemed just right. So even though I wasn't spot on with the gauge, I went ahead and did it anyway. And first thing I want to tell you is the cast on was not fun. 
it's a lot of stitches. I don't want to divulge that because, you know, you got to buy pattern. Um, by Mari Tobita. She lives in my city. Maybe someday I'll get to meet her. I know she's Japanese. It would be lovely to meet her. So Mari, if you're watching, look me up. It's a lot of stitches and it's not a long tail cast on. It's a cast on that I really don't use very often. A little more time consuming than long tail. The cast on took me an hour and 20 minutes. Just so you know. So here's my first few days of knitting on it. Once I got it cast on, then it was going a little more quickly. Um, I probably should show you the other, yeah, I probably should show you the other shawl that I'm working on, which is also lace, a whole different situation. Let me go get that. I've talked about this project before. I have it on those ergonomic needles because this is very flimsy, slippy, slidey. And these are wood, so they grip the yarn a little better. The yarn, by the way, is the same color mark. These are all leftovers from my Genie project, which used nine different colors of this stuff. This is being knit single thickness of this. Um, as you can see, it's very compact, so I can travel with this, but this lace is much more fiddly than the lace that Mari has designed. This lace on the front and the back has so many different twists and turns that it's almost impossible to memorize them. This project even though I can't memorize the entire sequence of the rows, once I start a row, it's easy enough to remember because it's like two of these, one of those, two of these, five of those, the end, and you know, repeat, something like that. That's not it, but it's something pretty easy like that. And also if you're able to read your knitting, you can start to see where the decreases happen. So much less complicated, for me at least, and I think also pretty portable. It's just this, that's the whole thing. I just thought that would be not exactly a palate cleanser, but from where I come from, this is mild compared to some of the really complicated sequences of things that I do. So I thought it would be nice to have something that was not draining my brain a lot that I could really make some progress with and also be able to take on the road with me. I have travel plans in a couple of weeks. For Father's Day, we're going to go down to Florida to visit my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, who is not doing very well. Uh, Nevertheless, I am thoroughly enjoying this and you'll be seeing it again. Um, you know, I forgot to mention that this yarn is a single ply, so it's not at all splitty. It's really, really hard to put your needle through this. So I don't tend to knit with a lot of things that are single ply. It's lovely. Like this yarn, for example, although it's very thin, it's not single ply. There are two thin plies here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can separate. There, I unraveled a little bit of it for you to see. So although this isn't very splitty, it can split. And if you happen to jab it in just the wrong place, it will split. Whereas the Malabrigo, that's not at all the case. I'm knitting this on a size four US or 3.5 millimeter needle, as the pattern suggests. Another reason why I started a new project was I had gone back to working on this for the rink or the lengths. 
it's very frustrating project for me, extremely frustrating project because I had knit an entire sweater. And when I went to put it on, although the measurements were right, it just didn't have enough give to get over my head. Ripping out something that was done in stranded color work with three colors was not fun. I'm still in the process of unraveling. I unraveled part and then began to re-knit. And this particular yarn, which is John Arba Knit by Numbers, I haven't had much success in soaking it and getting it to really uh, come back to its original beauty. But here it is. I mean, here's my re-knit of it. I think it doesn't look too bad. It certainly has a lot more stretch, which is what I was looking for. This is intarsia. I opted to switch away from doing stranded to doing intarsia. The back is not so pretty. Uh, I have a lot of ends that I'll have to weave in. But this is really tedious. Ripping out to get the yarn to knit with is a project in itself not fun. So I have to do this in small stages. I have done most of the front up until just about the underarm and I'm a good part of the way up the back. There's gonna be a bunch of ribbing under this. It's solid color, so that's a breeze. I'm making a lot of headway, but I needed a break. I wanted to do something that was just gonna be a little fluffier and easier. So that's what's on my needles. Now let's talk about my week. It was my husband's birthday. And part of the reason that we enjoy living in New York is because of the theater scene here and some of the other cultural activities that go on. So although we don't go to the theater often, we don't go to the opera often, we do try and save these things for special occasions. Five days a week, I take an opera appreciation class. And I'm sort of the ringleader of the group. I organized a little outing to go see Die Zauberflut, which some of you may know as the Magic Flute, the English translation of the German, uh, an opera by Mozart with libretto by Schikaneder. Anyway, the Met just launched a new production, which is very unusual. Here's the program. It doesn't give away much. What I could tell you is that there's a Foley artist involved in this production. If you're not familiar with what a Foley artist is, they're the people in movies who make all the sound effects like horses, hoofs clomping or footsteps on fallen leaves, um, rain, coming down on the tin roof. They're the sound effects people. I don't want to spoil it for you in case you ever get a chance to see it on HD, but this production involved some of that, which is very alluring. Music is beautiful. The people who were singing were all top notch. And a group of people from my class went. I organized getting the tickets for everyone so we could all go together and sit together. So that was last night. The night before, my husband and I got our eardrums blasted out by MJ the Musical. This is the Broadway production of the story of Michael Jackson and his musical career and elements of his life too. I can't say that I would recommend this. It was like being at a really loud rock concert at close range. It was way too loud, much louder than it needed to be. The songs are all songs that we know and love. So that was great. The actor did a fantastic impersonation of Michael Jackson. Great dancing pretty good singing. Um, for Broadway, I was disappointed. I just didn't think that everything was up to the caliber of what we expect when we go see a Broadway musical. But it's 
it won four Tony Awards and it seems to be like on the hot list of things to see. So this is what my husband wanted to see for his birthday and I complied. You already know that I'm into the movies. In fact, last week's episode was all about movies that feature different actors knitting. Some of their scenes are so brief, like that of Meryl Streep in Bridges of Madison County, that if you blink, you'll miss the scene. So I would love for you to comment below if you've seen movies that have any element of knitting in it. It's really fun. I probably will put together a part two to that episode sometime in the future. In the meantime, I wanted to share with you a couple more that I discovered recently. I have, well, one is button related, and I think I might have shared it with you before, an animated film about a woman who owns a button shop. It's really adorable. I'll leave a link in the show notes. But I found two this week that are specifically knitting related, also both animated films. One is about a woman who's so addicted to knitting that she actually puts her life in jeopardy. And the other one is called Pearl, P-U-R-L, and that's by Pixar. So not only will there be links, but I'll try and put a still image of all three of these just to whet your appetite. That's all I've got for you this week. Drop in again. I'll be back here same time, same place next week. Till then, take care, everybody. Ciao.